Welcome to FDT TV. Here's a little excerpt of our podcast where we predicted the Premier League table for the 22-23 season. You can find the full podcast on our YouTube channel and every other podcast platform in video and audio now. Uh, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and we'll see you soon. Thanks. Let's jump over to the next screen. Uh, which shows us, obviously, the teams in alphabetical order. First being AFC Bournemouth. That's why they're in front of Arsenal. Um, I think maybe we should run through it in chronological order and, and have a discussion as to where we think these teams are going to finish after 38 games in the Premier League. So, should we start with Bournemouth? Yep. Well, my, my initial... Do you know what? Go on. You know what? <laughs> I was looking at the uh, the table earlier. And I was like, how the hell are Bournemouth ahead of us? But you've just reminded me because yeah. they're AFC Bournemouth. They're, they're, they're um, full time. Anyway, yeah, we can't even say we're the top of the league for no, at, not at least the start of the season. Rowish. Um, right. So, Bournemouth, uh, for me, um, I'm going to go relegated. Oh, my, my initial instinct is relegated as well. Uh, I think Scott Parker's the manager now, isn't he? Um, they played well last mm -hmm. season. But again, they have a, a very small stadium and they're not um, ones to be spending loads. They're quite shrewd spenders because of the size of the club. They could pull it off. Obviously, they was in the Premier League for a number of years. But I think going down has done them a, a fair bit of damage in terms of good players at the squad or, or good players at the club. Maybe more of a squad now that plays a team. But I don't think the quality is going to be there. Mm -hmm. um, next, Arsenal. Arsenal are, are, are two, three, or four for me. I think they're going to finish third, yep, if I'm I totally agree. honest, uh, this season. Yep. Especially if you go on pre season, you could be a title winner. But I mean, I wouldn't hold your breath. Um, no. Pre, pre season is. Oh, I don't know, mate. Emirates, Emirates Cup trophy winners. Come on. Well, it's, it's like the first time in 12 years, isn't it? Or something. Uh, <laughs> no, 2017 was last one. Last one. Well, that's a few years, mate, for your own cup. Um, <laughs> Aston Villa. Aston Villa are a difficult one. Obviously, they've, uh, they've signed Coutinho on a, a permanent. They've brought in some other other players. Um, but when you look at, uh, I mean, last season we had a big thing: who's the better manager, Gerard or Lampard? Um, they have a very similar record, and Aston Villa mm -hmm. spent a lot more. Um, in that sense, I don't know whether they'll be dragged into a relegation battle, but I wouldn't put them any higher than the mid-table slot. Yep. So, should we go for mid-table, and then we can always move about if we go, if we change our minds a yes. bit later? So, we'll put yeah, them in yeah, there. Sounds good. Uh, Manchester United. Obviously, another new manager, Ten Hag. Worked wonders at Ajax. Has been drilling the team. Um... A number of players have said, actually, it's like being at a football club again. Um, only one problem. Well, I don't know if it even. I don't think it is a problem. Ronaldo wants out, mm -hmm. um, and the trouble is, no one can afford him. So they might be stuck with him. And I think, as much of a positive influence as he could be, he could also be a negative influence as well. Because you'll still want to play, but you ain't going to put in the effort. And I think him and Ten Hag will butt heads. They, mm -hmm. I know they've brought in Alex Ferguson again on the board. I don't know if that's to try and sort of be that. Butter him up. Yeah, because he is like a father figure to Ronaldo in terms of footballing. So for me, I think they have enough quality to be up there. But I think it's going to be a sixth place finish for United. Yep, I agree. So that's that. Brentford. Um, signed Aaron Hickey, who you was in for at one point. Another Scottish left back who can play yes. at right back. That's their big signing. Mm -hmm. They've also signed uh, Keen Lewis Porter from Hull for £20 million, which is a player I quite would have liked. Exciting in the lower leagues. Can he make the transition? Who knows? Um, but again... They could suffer that sort of second season syndrome. Um, and, and this is another one I, I wouldn't want to put higher than mid-table again. And it's it's difficult yep. because it's like, 
there's a number of these you could go relegation. Basically, if they play like they did last season, that'd be all right. They've added some quality mm-hmm. to their team. Um, where do you want to go? See, I'm toying between um, mid table and the the relegation one. Uh, I think stick them at mid table for the moment, and then we will work um, our way down. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Brighton. Interesting one, Brighton. They've sold East Pesuma, who is their midfield anchor, to Tottenham. Um, mm-hmm. Looks like yep. Cucurella could be going to Chelsea now because he's under Chelsea, yeah. uh, a silly transfer bid. So that's two big players that they've got rid of. And I don't think they've really brought it in any one of, of note to replace them. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, uh, Graham Potter hasn't playing very, very well. They do play as a team, play a very distinct style of football. I'm going to go, I, I would say these are mid-table. I, I don't think, I think there's enough co- quality in the squad potentially still uh, and, and some lesser teams who I think will struggle more than them for them to be relegated. I, I mm-hmm. think they could finish 14th or 15th. So again, it's another one that sort of straddles that line of... I'm, I'm going to go for 15th okay. for this one. I'll go with that. <clears throat> I think they'll be safe this year. Um, but I think with the, the two players, which you mentioned, if the uh, Cucurella one does come off to Chelsea, um, I think that's going to be a massive, massive <coughs> loss for them as well. And as you mentioned, with Basuma as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna go. I think they'll be. I think they'll be safer than some other teams. But um, there's yeah. gonna be some real patches uh, in their in their season, isn't there? Mm. Um, Chelsea. Yep. If you go on Chelsea's preseason form, uh, they're, they're getting, getting relegated. relegated. <laughs> um, but as always, oh, they're gonna be fine. I'm I'm gonna put them as two, three, or four. They they're gonna finish yep. in the top four. Obviously, they got rid of Lukaku. But they they've brought in some quality that they are still spending money, um, and it looks like Tuchel has been given sort of he's given them a, a wanted list, and they're trying to get the players that he wants rather than that Bramovich going. You're yep. going to have Lukaku back. He doesn't fit the system. Okay, we're still going to play him because we paid 195 million pounds for him. <laughs> um, Manchester City. Winners. All, all, yeah. For me. Yeah. Uh, they they were winners last year. They didn't have a striker. They now have a scary striker in Haaland. He hit the post in the um, Community Shield and people are going, oh, he's not as good as everyone's saying. He's played one game in pre-season. Um, yep. He, when you listen to his interviews, people say, oh, you're breaking all these sort of records. He's still like 19 or 20. And they're saying, you're breaking all these records, you're phenomenal, like you're big, you're strong. He's like, I'm not big enough, I'm not strong enough, I'm not fast enough, I'm not good enough at finishing. I, I've got a lot more to learn and I need to be better. I think the mentality behind that, as well as being, I mean, you put me up, up front for Man City, playing 38 games, I'm scoring 20 goals. I'm sorry, it just I think anyone is. Um, with his ability... I've said it a few. He's going to be the top goal scorer for me this year, um, and I think that will be the cause of a Manchester City skyrocketing. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that's 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 what I've thought for them. But you say said winners as well. So yep. <laughs> yeah, Crystal Palace. I'm going to go for top half. Yep. Um, obviously, Vieira's um, <clears throat> second season in charge, I thought was a, a massive surprise for uh, Crystal Palace fans uh, last season. The way he's got them playing uh, as well, I think they they were kind of like a bit of a guilty pleasure for me last season. Um, obviously, a winner's mentality. I know they had a few unlucky results, but that, I, again, they're a team that has got a lot of quality. Um and I think that they will be comfortably in the top half this year. Yes, uh, I agree. Um, the The biggest downfall that they have, they haven't got Colin Gallagher this year, but it does look like they're going to get mm-hmm. Ruben Loftus-Cheek back. Um, so I don't think he's the same quality as um, Gallagher in terms of his passing, but I think he will be trying to prove a point because he's now at a make-or-break stage of his, se- of his career. He'll either go down the pan mm-hmm. or and, and be forgotten, or he'll get a, 
uh, to stay in the Premier League for a few more years. So, yeah, I think Vieira will have them well drilled and top half without a problem. Yep. Everton, this is an interesting one, I think. They've sold Richarlison for £60 million. Looks like Deli Alley could mm-hmm. be back out the door. Um, under Lampard, they've brought in a few players, but they had, they had real patches of form last year. Um, if Calvert Lewin stays fit, he's scoring them goals, and I think they will go mid table. If he doesn't stay fit, I'm going to put them in a relegation battle. I think, like last year, they still yeah. have enough quality to stay up, but only just. Yes, so, I, I I can't agree more. I mean, we even spoke about this last week that um, <clears throat> they are, I would say, in real danger of potentially going down uh, this year. They had such a lucky escape last year. Um, but I think with the looking at how everyone else is recruiting, I don't think they stand a chance this year, if I'm being completely honest. And mm. as you said, Lisa, what are your better players? Um, it's It's a dangerous game. Yeah. Is a massively dangerous game. So yeah, and it wouldn't surprise me if we see Lampard sack this year as well. Yeah, so they've brought in, they have brought in like Tarkovsky and stuff to hopefully try and shore up the defence. But uh, it's not enough. It's not enough for me. No. Um, and and I, I know it was only a pre-season friendly that we played against them, uh, so it's basically a fitness match. But I think it, you could look. Or see even then Lampard thinking, shit, what the hell am I going to do? Yeah. Um, he's just got to hope that the teams around him don't or slip up when they slip up. Because uh, yeah. I, I don't see them going anywhere near the top half of the table or even mid-table. Mm. Mid-table at best, probably. Their strongest point, mid-table, um, possibly 13th, 14th at one point in the season and then tail off. Yeah, and I think, I think unfortunately, the owner... Looks like he, he's he's pumped loads of money into it, but he looks like he's sort of half out the door, going, mm, don't really want to put much more in. Um, yep. But we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. They are they are sort of one of the you could say sleeping giants of football, um, or of the Premier League. But I think you hit the nail on the head. They're not they're not got the quality in. Southampton mm-hmm. can beat you five nil. Also could get beat fifteen. Um, <laughs> I, 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 it's, it depends on what way the wind's blowing. I think the interesting yep. thing about this season uh, and what we have to remember is there are five substitutes. So yes. I think the games where Manchester City are freeing up and they go, right, okay, half time, let's make five substitutes. And you go, ha. Ah. When Southampton are in a bad game at that point, they are going to lose by 5 nil like, or 15 nil. Do you know what I mean? Um, for yeah. me, I'm going to put a mid table because although they do have those bad, really, really bad games, on the most part they're fairly consistent. And they're yeah. not not going to pull up trees, but you've got guaranteed goals yeah. from James Ward Prowse, and they're they're yeah they're there and thereabouts. Yep. Um, and then well I've, I've realised this isn't <clears throat> really actually in alphabetical order. For the most part, it is, but Fulham. Yep. Um, Relegation. Pre- yep. Yeah. Okay. Marco Silva, former Hull uh, and Everton manager, is at the helm at the minute. Um, they've got rid of Fabio Carvalho to Liverpool, who I think was their midfield maestro, and for his age, is absolutely phenomenal. Um, Mitrovic is a brilliant, brilliant championship striker. And I think if you put him at one of the big clubs, he does really well. But he, he he's not going to get the service that he he does in the championship because of the quality of players or quality of opposition, I should say. Um, mm-hmm. So even even with him at full blast, he's not getting the service. So he's not scoring the goals. I think you you're you're one hundred percent correct with that. Oh, excuse me. Which moves us on to an interesting one. Because under Bielsa, Mm -hmm. they played really well in the first season. They got rid of him in the second, um, although they were they were stricken with injuries. They were playing youth, and they 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 were the only team who never had a game postponed through COVID. Um, 
and they they, they fielded teams regardless. Um, they just about survived after changing yep. to was it Bruno Lag? Was that their manager? It's something yes. like that. Um, American guy hmm. who seems to be playing a better, I say better, a more or less volatile style of football. Um, yes. But they've sold Calvin Phillips. And although he didn't play a lot last year because he was injured, it showed how much they needed him because when he did come on, he, he won them games um, through winning the ball back. So for me, I'm going to say relegation battle or, and and this is a difficult bit, or relegated. Yes. Um, and it, it really, I think this is one of those seasons that it could, again, come down to the last game of the season and there could be a, a sort of two or three teams who could be relegated at that point. I don't think we're going to see anyone relegated in, like, February. Do you know what I mean? No. Yeah, um, yeah. So, where do you want to put them? Because I think they, 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 I... they, they'll either finish 15th or bottom, like... <laughs> I think that's a big. The, the... No, I I agree. Um, I'm just just looking at the teams that are left. I, we can always move about as we I, I, as we go. <clears throat> yeah, I, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna say relegation. Okay. And again, I think it's going to be a close season. It's not, this is not cut and dry. Mm -hmm. I think at the top end of the season it, it, it <clears throat> might be. But now Leicester, Leicester uh, had again a fair share of injuries. Um, and they still finished mid-table last year. The big thing for me is, at the minute, James Madison, Newcastle are trying to prize him away for £50 million with a second bid. So I think he'll probably go. Chelsea are after Wesley Fofana, who made a big mm -hmm. difference uh, when he was in the, the team. Uh, but again, injured for large periods of last season. I think the fact that they've got James Justin back fit uh, and another um, number of other other defenders back fit will help but if they lose those two players I think they'll finish mid-table at best if they don't they could finish top half mm -hmm. um, so I'll go I'll go with that's that's my thoughts what do you think no spot on absolutely spot on I was going to say top half for them so we, we put them in there um, yep Liverpool now, I think you now, know my opinions on Liverpool this season. Um, yes. Uh, for, for those of you that don't know, um, Ian seems to th or Ian is under the impression with the fact that they have lost Sadio Mane and the contributions that he was making for the team last season, or sorry, for, for previous seasons. Yep. Now, now that Salah is quite selfish, um, he thinks that they're going to struggle. I, to be honest, I have to agree with you. I know they did stick past three past um, Man City the other day. One of them was a penalty that should never have been given anyway. Um, in fact, sorry, it was two, wasn't it? It was a two one. It was three. No, it was three two one. Nil. It was three, three it was one. Three, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, and then that Darwin Nunez, uh, obviously getting the the goal. Uh, to be honest, I think that was more luck than judgment. I think he was in the right place and it just hit his head. If I'm being completely honest, yep. I didn't see much of. I did, oh, sorry, I didn't think much of him um, from what I've seen in preseason, from the highlights, and also within that particular game. I mean, I'm happy to be proved wrong, but I'm I'm going to go for top four for them. Okay. See my my my, my I, I was gonna go I was gonna put them fifth and and I, let me let me explain that a little bit um, and then mate because there's there's one other team that I think will will pick them for a top four. Mane uh, was a team player and happy to pass. Same as Firmino who didn't get in the team much last year. So Jota um, sort of played the part passing to to Mane who got it back occasionally. He never got anything from Salah. But he gave him the goals. Now Marley's gone, and they've got Darwin Nunes, they've got Jota, and they've got uh, Louise. Was it Louise who they bought in January? Those three yes. players are now vying for two spots because I think Firmino knows he's done. At what point? 
Well, I think at the point where they could they could shoot and get a goal, or they could pass to Salah, they're going to shoot. They're all young players. They all want to want to make their mark. They all want to be in the first team. So I think at that point, that's where they're going to struggle because previously it was pass to Salah, pass to Salah, pass who's open. You haven't got those. They they, they could prove me wrong, but I think just because they want to make that impression. The young striker generally doesn't have the composure to go, right, OK, let's look up who's about. No, I'm through on goal. Let's have a shot. So for me, I think I think they will finish fifth. Now, okay. I, I think the difference between sixth... I, no, this is... I think the difference between fifth and the rest of the table is going to be... There's going to be a huge gap. Don't get me wrong. I, I think it's going to be as close to the top. It is at the bottom, but mm-hmm. yeah. So I'm, I, we'll put we'll put me in, we'll put me in fourth place for the minute. I think I think it's actually going to go a bit like that. I think you'll get third. I think you'll slip up around Christmas, even though there's a World Cup as there's no do. games. Um, Newcastle. <laughs> yes. Newcastle um, are trying to make moves in in the transfer market. Obviously Saudi backed, but they're not being as backed as much as you would think. Some of the players they're bringing in are a bit like a question mark. Some are at the end of their career. But I still think comfortably with, with how they were playing last season, they're going to be top half. Yep. Agreed. Nothing more to say on that. Um, now, Nottingham Forest. I think we know where this is going. Um, it's going to go in relegation battle. Yep. And I think it's going to be out of for- Forest and the obviously the relegated teams to be relegated. Um, I think it's going to be very close. I think even Everton and Brighton potentially could get drawn into that battle. Um, yep. It just it said I think there's going to be a huge gasp in in points in the table uh, at some point. Um, now Tottenham, I know you don't like it. They're getting top four this season, but we'll put we'll put them in there. I think I think I think mate, I'm 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 happy to to shuffle those around if you want to shuffle really, those around. It's really hard because you could put it like that. You could put four in there, um, but it, we're trying to make it as a. I, I think it's good. The table's going to finish a bit like that at the top. Man, Man City first, Chelsea, Arsenal, Spurs, Liverpool, United. The reason I say that is they are recruiting, and they're recruiting reasonably well. They've got Conte, who has won the Premier League, so he knows how to win it. He's won all around the world. They're going to get a trophy this year. I know I said it under Mourinho, and they would have done it if they hadn't sacked him a week before a bloody final. Um, the final, yeah. But um, I think he will get them ticking, and they're going to be horrible to play against this year. Okay. That, that's that's my opinion. But but say, as it could go any other, it could go any other way. Liverpool could prove me wrong. Um now the the we'll leave that for last. Um, wolves. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 do you, what do you think of wolves? I would. And this is a difficult bit because you you could go that you could. I think wolves will be top half or mid table depending on again a bit like Southampton. What way the wind's blowing? Since mm-hmm. they got rid of Nuno, they're not as predictable, but they're always sort of, they're, they're that sleeper team, aren't you? People, people go ah. Oh, Three points. At, oh, hang on, we've drawn or, or we've lost. But there's only Wolves. They've only got Ruben Neves. But they've got um, I'm, Neto. They've got Jimenez. I'm going to go mid-table for them. Okay. I think it's a good place to put them. I think you'd probably be that in the mid-table. Yes. But, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then West Ham. Commerce uh, League. Yeah. Yeah. Possibly, our preseason form has never been good, but it's never been good ever. Um, we've got a difficult game coming up, the first game of the season, so I think that's almost like a we start on week two. Um, but again, I think that could go a number of ways, depending on what we do. We can now have a striker. Apparently, we're going in for another winger, left back, and striker. Um, he can play in all three. My biggest thing is that the striker we've signed. He's a big lad. PSG wanted him. Manchester United wanted him. He came to us. Um, 
because he plays, he, or he's played with, I want to say it was Pedro Obiang, who sort of sang our praises, um, and he's gone, that, that's where I want to play. He scored something like 16 goals last year, full high scorer. But as we see with Lukaku, the Premier League's a different beast. you got to play to a system. Yeah. Um, so I think Antonio having to compete for his spot will be good because that means mean Antonio yep. will have to be sharp. Also, with the fact of, OK, let's play the big guy and with 60 minutes to go, as people are getting tired legs, let's bring Antonio on. Just run at them, mate. But it's bottom about a bit. Use your weight. That that makes us potentially a more dangerous outfit. Um, I think under Moyes, you know what you're going to get. It's going to be hard working. It's never going to be necessarily the prettiest, but we've managed to keep older Rice. We've kept older Bowen, and we've 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 bought a fair few few players. So I think seventh. I don't think we'll get anywhere near the top. But as I said, I think possibly from Manchester United down to sort of 11th will be really close. Then there'll be a big gap again from 12th to bottom. But I think the top the top five teams will be flying. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so that that's that's my opinion. Obviously, well, it's our opinions. We, with our opinion, our I'll opinions. be interested to see actually if we um we'll take if a, we can get a copy of this to see how yeah. How close we are at the end of the season. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we will review it at the end of the season to see how far off we were. So we'll go Manchester City first, Chelsea second, Arsenal third, Spurs fourth, Liverpool fifth, Manchester United sixth, West Ham seventh, Palace eighth. Mm. Or do you want to put them a bit I'm going to go Leicester, Leicester eighth. Leicester, Palace, then Newcastle. Less than Newcastle, then Palace. Okay. Um, Wolverhampton Wanderers, Aston Villa, Southampton, Brentford. Brighton, Everton, Forest, Bournemouth. Du, du. This, this is the difficult one. Because I, yes. I think they could end up finishing bottom. Or will they? No, because... I, I think... Mm. I'd, I'd, uh, Bournemouth and Fulham, I agree. I'm torn between Newcastle, uh, Newcastle, Everton, Le- Forest, and Bournemouth. Uh, Leeds, sorry. Everton. So, should we. Do you want to go. Is, do you want to go like that? Or do you want to. I, I, if I'm honest, I, 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 do, I do think Leeds will go down this year. I don't think they that, were anything special last yeah. year. But so we'll, we'll go with that. Obviously, these ones are are the most difficult because because again, Everton could do really well, Southampton could do bad. Same with Brighton. It, it, the transfer window is still open, so so a lot of things can change. There's a lot of variables still. Um, but this is what we'll go with. Let us know who you think is going to win and get relegated. Um, and yeah, so that moves us on 